I'll just paint this on right around these these intake port openings. You don't need to get these water jacket openings or the heat riser, just, just the ports. Paint that on and we'll let it dry. It doesn't have to be neat. Put a little more on down here. You could just use a felt tip marker, but it won't give you as accurate a line as the bluing and a uh, fine point uh, scribe will do. Now I'll just take this intake manifold gasket and locate it on the head with a couple of bolts just installed loosely. Okay, and then we'll make sure everything's lined up and I'm going to get in here and scribe around these openings so we see how far out we can open the port. There's no point in opening them beyond this obviously because you just have gasket failure. You want to make sure you get this well scribed so it won't just rub off. Okay we'll just take our gasket away and now you can plainly see how much we can take out of this port runner to open it up and that will make our head flow more freely. We'll also want to do the same thing on this intake manifold back here to match it up exactly. Now for the next step we're going to need safety glasses, work gloves to protect our hands, and we're going to need a particle mask because you don't want to be breathing that black iron dust that's in here. Now you want to get a shop vac like this with a bag in it to catch the dust and swarf while you're grinding. Otherwise it'll blow all over everywhere and get into everything. Okay, now I'm just going to put my plastic tube into the pocket, the valve pocket in the combustion chamber so we can suck all the dust out while I'm working on the port runner. I'll tip this up. Now I'm going to bring the lamp down here and shine it onto the tube and that sends light up through the port runner and I can see a big piece of casting slag down in there that we're going to have to get out. That's really going to cause a lot of turbulence. The object of opening up these ports isn't to make them bigger but to clean them up, cut down on turbulence and allow the air to flow smoothly because air doesn't like to turn corners or go around obstacles. We'll just open all this up in here and clean up all that slag. Now this is a little rig I've put together, especially for head porting. Here we have a water trap and that keeps water from getting into the tool. Over here we have an adjustable pressure gauge. It's adjustable down here and it's set at about 50 pounds. The reason for that is that way I can hold this tool with the throttle all the way down like <gasps> this. And this will only spin at about 12,000 RPM. Now I'm going to start with an 80 grit abrasive roll like this on my air power die grinder. What do you say we get suited up and get started? Now I could use a carbide burr if I really wanted to make short work of this. But I'm going to start out with an abrasive roll instead. Just keep in mind, if you get a little impatient, that carbide burr can take off a lot in a hurry. So unless you're willing to put in a little seat time practicing with them on a scrap head, don't mess with them. The abrasive rolls may take a little longer, but you won't run the risk of seeing the inside of your water jacket with them. <laughs> 